Okay, um, <clears throat> finite math students, we're going to work on problem 103 for this video. Um, <clears throat> excuse the sore throat. Uh, let's see, so 103 in your... <clears throat> 103 in your matrices and linear optimization homework is a farmer can buy two types of plant food mix a and mix b each cubic yard of mix a contains 40 pounds of phosphoric acid 28 pounds of nitrogen and six pounds of potash I'm not sure what potash is. You're going to have to Google that if you really want to know. It's some type of nutrient, I suppose. Each cubic yard of mix B contains 10 pounds of phosphoric acid, 28 pounds of nitrogen, and 27 pounds of potash. <clears throat> the minimum monthly requirements are 600 pounds of phosphoric acid, 980 pounds of nitrogen, and 270 pounds of potash. Find the set of feasible solutions graphically for the amounts of mix A and mix B that can be used. <clears throat> okay, excuse me. If X is the number of cubic R yards, sorry, <laughs> if X is the number of cubic yards of mix A, used and why is the number of cubic yards of mix b used write a system of linear inequalities that indicates appropriate restraints on x and y write an inequality for the constraint on phosphoric acid complete the inequality below okay so for this problem <clears throat> Um, you know, all the linear programming problems in this assignment have two decision variables or two independent variables. Okay, so those variables are um, x is equal to the number, the number of uh, let me see, <clears throat> the number of cubic, the number of cubic, hey, one second, <laughs> the number of cubic yards, the number of cubic yards of, well, that's not very good writing, the number of cubic yards of mix, mix A. <clears throat> and then Y, <clears throat> forgive the sore throat, Y is going to be basically the same thing, the number of cubic yards of mix B, mix B the number of cubic yards of mix B. Okay, so we're going to have a constraint for phosphoric acid, we're going to have a constraint for nitrogen, and we're going to have a constraint for potash. All right, so for phosphoric acid, what is our constraint? It says here each cubic yard of mix A contains 40 pounds of phosphoric acid. That's 40, 40 A. And then um, <clears throat> each cubic yard of mix B contains 10 pounds of phosphoric acid. Okay, so that's going to be 10 pounds of phosphoric acid per cubic yard of mix B. And that's going to have to be um, greater than or equal to 600. Greater than or equal to 600. Okay. <clears throat> 
this is the phosphoric acid constraint. And then um, for nitrogen, the nitrogen constraint, um, each cubic yard of mix A contains 28 pounds of nitrogen. 28 pounds of nitrogen. And each cubic yard of mix B contains uh, each cubic yard of mix A contains 28 pounds of nitrogen. Each cubic yard of mix B also contains 20, oh, uh, also contains 28 pounds of nitrogen. 28 pounds of nitrogen. And that's going to be greater than or equal to let me see, um, the minimum monthly requirements are 600 pounds of phosphoric acid, 980 pounds of nitrogen, 980 pounds of nitrogen. <clears throat> and then finally, the potash requirement, it says here each cubic yard of mix A contains six pounds of potash, six pounds of potash plus um, each cubic yard of mix B contains 27 pounds of potash, 27 pounds of potash. And that's going to be greater than or equal to, uh, let's see, the minimum monthly requirements are 600 pounds, oh, 600 pounds of phosphoric acid, 980 pounds of nitrogen, and 270 pounds of potash. So that's going to be 270 pounds of potash. <clears throat> the other restrictions are, of course, A has to be greater than or equal to zero, and B has to be greater than or equal to zero. So A has to be greater than or equal to zero. And B has to be greater than or equal to zero. B has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay? And there you have it. <clears throat> so let's see. Um, you know what? They're using, um, instead of X, they're using, well, I'm using A and B, Pearson is using X and Y. So actually, um, Pearson is using X, I'm using A. So X is equal to A and Y is equal to B. Okay, so Pearson wants us to use the variables X and Y. I'm using the variables A and B, it's really the same thing. It's really the same thing, but I think Pearson wants you to, wants you to use X and Y, all right? <clears throat> so we'll use X and Y. So the what is the phosphoric acid constraint? It's 40X plus 10Y is greater than or equal to 600. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Write an inequality for the constraint on nitrogen. Complete the inequality below. 28x plus 28y is greater than or equal to 980. Write an inequality for the constraint on potash. Complete the inequality below. 6x plus 27y. Remember, I'm using a and b, um, but Pearson wants us to use x and y. It's the same thing. Is greater than or equal to 270. Okay, terrific. Are there any are any other inequalities needed? Uh, yes, 
x and y are greater than or equal to zero. <clears throat> okay, use the graphing tool to graph the system. Graph the region that represents the correct solution only once. Okay, so here, you know, this is where, uh, mm, let's see, let me, let me erase what I wrote over here, okay? Okay, so first, let's worry about the first equation. We have 40x plus 10y is greater than or equal to 600. <clears throat> Forget about the inequality for right now. Treat this as a regular equation, a linear equation. 40x plus 10y is equal to 600. What happens if y is equal to 0? If y is equal to 0, we're going to have 40 times what is equal to 600. So let's see, 600 divided by 40. You know what, why isn't that, hold on one second. Um... One second. I'm trying to make these bold. Okay. So 600, that's better, divided by 40 is equal to 15. So if y is equal to 0, if y is equal to 0, x is going to be equal to 15, right? If y is equal to 0, x is equal to 15. Okay, I'm just going to write that down. <clears throat> X-intercept for the first linear equation. Okay. And then what happens when X is equal to 0? Then uh, Y is going to be 60. Y is going to be 60 because, you know, 10 times, 10 times 60 is equal to 600, okay? So then I'm gonna have 0, 60, and that's going to be the, the y-intercept for the first linear equation, okay? <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna click on the drawing tool Uh, that's not quite what I want. Okay. Um, there we go. Click click on the line tool. Uh, let's see. 0, 60. And 15, 0. There we go. That looks pretty good. <clears throat> oh, that looks good. Zero, 060, and this is... If I have to edit the coordinates, I could do that here. Okay, 15, 0. Now let's go to the second linear equation. The second linear equation is... Um, 28x plus 28y is greater than or equal to 900. What happens when x is equal to 0? Well, what's 980 divided by 28? It's going to be 35. So here, you're going to have the two intercepts are going to be very similar. You're going to have 0, 35, and 35, 0. Okay? So then uh, do the same thing as before. Click on your graph. <clears throat> Click the line tool, and then here we're going to have 35, 0, 35, and 35, 0. Okay, there we go. There you have it. Okay, what about the third, <clears throat> the third equation, the third linear equation? Okay, one second. The third linear equation is 6x plus 27y is greater than or equal to 270. So what happens when x is equal to 0? 
then y is going to be 10 because 27 times 10 is 270. So we're going to have 0, 10. This is the y-intercept for the third equation. <clears throat> All right. And what happens when y is equal to 0? If y is equal to 0, you have 270 divided by 6, which is equal to 45. So that means 45 comma 0. Uh, this is the x-intercept. This is the x-intercept for the third equation. OK? Click on my graph. <clears throat> click on my graph. Click on the line tool. So let's see, 45, 0. I'm going to click on the point 45, 0. And then um, 0, 10. 0, 10 is going to be this point right over here. OK. So now I have to consider, you know, um, how, do I, how do I find my feasible region? I mean, there are a lot of different ways of doing this. A lot of it boils down to trial and error, to be honest with you. <clears throat> so how do I find my feasible region? Let me just make sure I did this one correctly. So six, if x is 0, then y is 10. And if y is 0, uh, x should be 45. That looks fine. OK. So this looks fine so far. How am I going to find uh, the feasible region? Region plot. Mm, let me move this over here. <clears throat> 40 times x plus 10 times y is greater than or equal to 600, and 28 times x plus 28 times y is greater than or equal to 980 and 6x plus 27y is greater than or equal to 270 <clears throat> and x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Now let's see, from the graph, it looks like um, we have to go all the way to, let's say, well, the graph goes to, let's say, 70, 70 and 70. Okay, 70 and 70. So x goes to, from 0 to 70, although we really don't have to go that far, but that's okay. y goes from 0 to 70. Uh, the boundary style can be thick absolute thickness, let's say 5, and black, <clears throat> and um, uh, plot style will be, how about uh, opacity, let's make it a little transparent, and uh, Pink. Okay, so you can see that the feasible region, the feasible region is actually an unbounded region. It's an unbounded region. I think um, Pearson uses yellow. Pearson likes to use yellow but it really doesn't make much of a difference. And you can plot these lines if you really want to. You can see the lines. I mean, it's pretty obvious, you know, it, it is really obvious what the lines are. If you want to plot the lines, you can. You can do plots. Um, let's see, you can do uh, 600 minus 40x divided by 10 x goes from 0 to 70, and you could do oops, plot 
980 minus 28x divided by 28, where x goes from 0 to 70. And you can do plot, uh, let's see, uh, 270 my, uh, let's see, hold on one second. 270 minus 6x divided by 27, x goes from 0 to 70. <clears throat> we're combining all of these pictures, so we're going to do show. I mean, you can see, you can see the lines, right? You, we can see the lines. Uh, we can, you know, uh, uh, let's see, if you want to make it look more like their picture, you can. You could do, um, hold on one second. If you want to make it look more like their picture, you could do image size is, let's say, 600 pixels. <clears throat> and uh, you could do grid lines, automatic, automatic um, it looks kind of like their picture um, and you I mean you could do other things to make it look more like their picture you could do uh, Plot style, thick, blue, um, plot style, thick, whoop. This is extra stuff. It's not absolutely necessary, but if you want to make a really nice picture, you could do this. Um, plot style, thick, blue. Okay, so it's starting to look more like the picture that Pearson has. Um, you could also do, well, let me see. Um, hold on one second. No, that's not quite what I had in mind. Uh, oops, wait, 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 sorry about that. I have to have a comma. <clears throat> and um, we could do you know, if I want to imitate their picture, uh, I could also do, um, well, let's see. So table, well, actually, let me keep it like this. Um, ticks table. We're going to go from 0 to 70 in steps of 5. So k, k goes from 0 to 70 in the steps of 5. The same for the x-axis. 0 to 70 in the steps of 5. Oh, wait a second. Uh, sorry about that. <clears throat> Okay, that did not, hold on one second. Um, oh, this has to be changed to the command frame ticks. Sorry about that, frame ticks. Uh, this, is, this is if you really want to create a really nice graph. Okay. So, this is starting to look more like their picture. Um, you know, this is starting, and then we could, I mean, you could do a lot of different things to add, you know, to spice up the picture. Um, you know, we could, um, we could add more of these grid lines. We could do, I mean, we could do a lot of, I mean, I'll just play with it a little bit more to show you what you can do with it. Um, but it's not, you know, absolutely necessary to do this. It's up to you. Um, K zero to 70 in steps of five. And we'll do the same thing here. 
table k, k goes from 0 to 70, n steps of 5. Um, so now you can see it's starting to look more like uh, the picture. And we, if we, we can add one more thing to it. Um, grid lines style could be thick and black. Oh, that's only for, um, well, okay, so for the, um, there. Well, let's see. Again, it depends on how much you want to do with your picture. Um, it actually looks pretty good. It's kind of a nice looking picture, although um, that's rather extreme. Um, let's try gray. All right, that looks a little bit better. So if we compare it, if we compare this to um, Pearson's picture, it's going to look pretty similar. Well, not exactly the same, but it's going to look pretty similar. So the only thing we're missing now is this part. Um, <clears throat> okay, we still, wait a minute, we still have to... Um, okay, we still have to fill in the feasible region. And the feasible region, as you can see is going to be this part of the graph that's shaded yellow. All right, so how do I do that? Press the paint bucket, go up here, and now it's yellow. Now it's yellow. Check answer, it should be correct. Um, Okay, so why is there an issue here? It doesn't seem to like what I did. The set of feasible solutions or the feasible region, okay, is the solution region of this system of inequalities. Okay, well, that's what I did. So I'm not sure why it's giving me an issue over this. Um, okay, for some reason, it doesn't seem... Okay, it's for some reason it's it, this should be the correct answer to the problem. Um, okay, that's very, very strange. Um, that is very, very strange. <clears throat> okay, unless is there a problem here with my inequalities? I don't think so. Um, and I think the picture, I think the graphs are okay. Uh, are my corner points okay? Zero thirty five. That should be okay. Um, yeah, that's very, very strange. This should be correct. Check answer. Okay, let's see what they have as their, as their solution, because my solution should be correct. Your answer, correct answer. Okay, that's very strange because they look exactly the same. <laughs> um, unless, you know, I think when you're doing these problems, guys, I think... What they want is for you to put the paint bucket all the way in the upper right. So my solution, this is my answer, this is the correct answer, and they look absolutely identical. So I think, um, oh, you know what? what's missing? Okay, what's missing, I see what's missing. Pearson wants you to graph 
this line right over here, y is equal to zero and, and x is equal to zero. So that's what's actually missing. So forget about the location of the paint bucket. I think that's irrelevant. What's missing is that Pearson, and I personally think this is a little bit trivial, what's missing is Pearson wants you to graph the horizontal line here, y is equal to zero, and Pearson also wants you to graph the vertical line, x is equal to zero. All right, and that's actually pretty easy to do. I mean, that's not a big deal. So you can see that in the correct answer. Other than that, the two answers look exactly the same. So uh, to me, I mean, personally, I think that's kind of trivial, but if that's what Pearson wants you to do, then that's what Pearson wants you to do. <clears throat> the reason I think it's a little bit trivial is because all of the X and Y values that you're graphing are already greater than or equal to zero anyway. So why bother graphing the lines y is equal to zero and x is equal to zero. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's kind of silly, but if that's what Pearson wants you to do, then that's what Pearson wants you to do. So that's fine, okay? But other than that, you can see that the two solutions are really basically the same. But just be careful. Remember that when you do these problems, you are going to have to graph the line y is equal to zero, which is, you know, the x-axis, and you're going to have to graph the line, you know, x is equal to zero for positive x and y is equal to zero for positive y, you know, starting at the origin, zero, zero, because that's what Pearson wants you to do, all right? Okay, I think that's enough for, for now, guys. Um, I showed you this problem. And I showed you how to do the problem in Mathematica. <clears throat> this is how you can create the graph in Mathematica. And as you can see, um, well, I just closed the window, but as you can see, it looks practically the same as their graph. Um, and that's really about it. I think, I think we're good to go. I think this was an okay video in spite of the fact that I have kind of a sore throat. But I think this is good enough. Okay, take care and have a great night. Bye-bye.